Hey guys, welcome back to a new video. In this video, we will start with our Pokédex MVVM app that I already teased out on my Instagram. In case you missed that, it will be just an app that makes use of an API, a public API. You don't need an API key for that. You can just directly use it as it is. And this API will retrieve all Pokémon that are out there as a list. And we will just make our very own Pokédex app out of that. All of that will use Jetpack Compose. I recommend you to watch my Jetpack Compose basics playlist first because I won't go super in detail here into the single Compose components. Um, at least I won't explain anything in detail that I explained in detail in that basics playlist. So on the one hand, this project purpose is to have fun, most importantly. Um, but on the other hand, you will learn how you can make a real app out of Jetpack Compose that uses MVVM, that uses view models, repositories, and API, and just how you can structure that in a solid way to actually make an app that looks pretty good. I know my apps back then looked pretty bad, but I am improving, as you can see. This looks better than my first apps I even published here on YouTube. And by the way, you will also learn how to do pagination here, so you can see it loads I think 20 Pokemon at once, and then it stops, loads the next ones, and so on. And let's say we want to view a specific Pokemon, like this one, then you can see that is the detail view, we have an animation here for the base stats, we can see the weight of the Pokemon, the height, the types, and the name, and the number of course. And we will also auto detect the dominant color for each Pokemon to actually choose the background color. So this fire Pokemon has a different background color as this grass Pokemon, for example. So just depending on uh, what the dominant color of a specific Pokemon is, we will choose a different color. You can see, even though that's a bug Pokemon, it has the background that fits to the Pokemon's color. What you need to do now is you need to take a look in this video's description and download this project here from my GitHub repository. So let's actually show you how that works. Um, this is actually the API we will use, pokeapi.co. You can experiment with that here, uh, but as I said, you don't need to register here. You can directly use that API, and I will show you how you can do that. Let's actually visit my GitHub very quickly. You will see here is this Jetpack Compose Pokedex repository that I will link in this video's description. You want to be sure to be on the master branch, which will just contain the initial project setup for this project. And then you can either copy uh, this URL here, you go to code, click copy, go to Android Studio Canary version, that's important because right now Compose is only available for Canary. If when you're watching this video it's available for stable, then you can of course also use stable, but right now it isn't. You want to go to File, New, Project from Version Control and simply paste that URL here from my GitHub and Android Studio will automatically import my project on your machine. So what this initial project contains are just a bunch of colors as you can see in this color.kt file. Um, I don't think I need to show that here on YouTube how I constructed these colors which I think just fit to the different types for the Pokemon and the different stats. And then we have our standard type file where I just added a font family. I will use Roboto and Roboto Condensed. These two font families, um, here we can uh, just create a typography with that. This is actually nothing special here and you also learned that in my basics playlist. So in the end we can then construct our theme for the application. We can construct a dark color palette and a light color palette to just have different colors for dark and light mode. So here in this Jetpack Compose Pokedex theme we just get a variable whether the current app is in dark theme or not. If so we will use the dark color palette and else the light color palette and then we will construct the theme. And then I added some vector graphics here in our drawable folder which we will use I added the font Roboto here in our font folder and that is actually it. Um, yeah, so that is basically just what you get with this initial project. Oh, of course, the dependencies. Here in our Boulder Gradle module app file, um, 
we just have some uh, basic Jetpack Compose dependencies here. On the one hand, for all the icons we can access with Jetpack Compose, we have a dependency for Jetpack Compose together with view models. We have one for Navigation Compose, so just to be able to set up a navigation graph in Jetpack Compose, basically the Jetpack Compose version of Navigation Component, and that is also what we will start to implement in this video. Constraint layout, I'm not sure we actually don't need this. Um, I'll still leave it in. We have retrofit for making network requests to our API. Timber, which we will also probably not use just for logging. Um, Coroutines to just, well, make asynchronous network requests. We have coil for loading the images from the network. And it's also not that trivial to load images from the network in Jetpack Compose. That is why I included this Google Components library, which just comes with a composable that makes use of uh, coil and loads an image from the network into our composable. And finally, Dagger Hilt for dependency injection. You already know that if you know the playlist from my channel. If not, then it will get clear in this playlist. And finally, we have the palette library, which is used to just determine the dominant colors of an image, which we will just use to choose a well-fitting background color for a Pokemon. And I can really only suggest you to use the same versions of the dependencies that I use, especially those that want to be updated here. Don't update those, because right now this wouldn't work. Of course, depending on when you watch this video, there will be newer Jetpack Compose versions, newer versions of all these dependencies. But if you like to finish this playlist without crashes and without frustration, I really recommend you to just get this project from my GitHub and don't change the dependencies. But that is actually it for the intro here. Now we can finally start to build our app. I will start in our main activity because here is the entry point for our application. You can see this is already here wrapped into this Jetpack Compose Pokédex theme, which just makes sure that everybody, uh, everything that comes in here uses our theme colors, if we specify it that way, of course. And all we want to do here in main activity is we want to set up navigation. So we, we want to have a nav host here, which is just the container which contains our different screens and is basically responsible for replacing these when we navigate to another screen. So before, when we used navigation component for um, Android using XML layouts, we needed to define a nav graph, we needed to define from which fragment we can, def uh, we can transition to which other fragment. All that is not needed anymore. Instead, we just define this nav host once and every single screen of our app will be a composable and we just tell this nav graph that we define here which different screens we have and then later in our app we can just transition to these screens. That's super simple. So let's actually get started. We want to first get a reference to our nav controller. You will know that from navigation component we also had that here. In Compose we can get this with remember uh, nav controller. So this will just give us an instance to this nav controller and with that we can later then perform the actual navigation. We will pass that nav controller to all of our screens so we can also access it from there. And then as I said we will have a nav host here, that nav host composable, which will take our nav controller instance. And it also wants a graph from us but we won't give it a graph. Instead we also have a second option of passing the start destination, which is a string here. So in XML layouts, we had to pass IDs for a specific destination and navigation component. Now in Jetpack Compose, we just have strings. So we can just give our single screens our own names and then say, OK, we want to transition to the Pokemon list screen or we want to transition to the Pokemon detail screen. Those are the two screens we will have here. And now the start destination, the first screen that will show up in our app is our Pokemon list screen. And then we can open curly braces here. And I will actually move that into the next lines to format that a little bit so you can also see that better. 
And now in this navhost block, we have the option to specify so-called composables here. So that is just a composable as a normal function that is not really a composable. But with that, we can define our single screens basically in our app. So now we just give the screen a route. So we say, okay, that is our Pokemon list screen. We could also pass arguments here for that screen, deep links and so on. But our very first screen does not need that. And then now inside of this block, we just put all the composables that we want to have on our first screen, on our Pokemon list screen. And you can see that it's super simple now with Compose. We don't need to create any XML files anymore. Instead, we can just say, okay, Composable. And instead of that, we will have Composables that describe our actual screen. And because we don't have our Pokemon list screen Composable yet, I will leave that empty for now. But I will create another Composable here, which will be our Pokemon underscore detail screen. So that will be the screen when we click on a specific Pokemon to see its details. And for that screen, we actually need arguments. So you will also learn how we can do that. Because when we click on a Pokemon, then we need to pass the name of the Pokemon we clicked on to the detail screen. So we can actually make the API request in the detail screen um, to actually know which Pokemon we want to request data for. And we also want to pass the dominant color of the Pokemon so we can also assign that in our Pokemon detail screen and we don't need to calculate that again. So we can specify a list of arguments here. You can see arguments is equal to a list of named nav argument. That is what we want to do. And here we can now specify a list of such arguments. So on the one hand, we have a nav argument, which is called dominant color. You can see then we have access to a builder in which we can configure that argument. And here I just want to set the type of that argument to nav type dot int type. So we just say, okay, the type of the dominant color we pass is just an integer here. You could specify even more here. If you just type this dot, you can see a default value, you can make it nullable, but we are just fine with using this type here. And then we will have another nav argument, which will be called Pokemon name. And that will have the type nav type dot string type because the name is of course of type string. And now you might also wonder how we can actually pass these arguments on navigation because we cannot simply pass these as arguments for a function. Instead, what we need to do is we need to treat this route similar to a URL. So we can also give this route just path parameters just as a URL using a slash curly braces and in here we specify the name of the parameter. So dominant color, another slash and curly braces and here we specify Pokemon name. And then later when we navigate to that route we can simply say okay our nav controller dot navigate and then we pass this string and we just replace this dominant color with our color and our Pokemon name with our actual name. And our navigation library will then just extract these arguments here inside of our composable block and we can get these using val dominant color for the color is equal to remember. Here we can get the color by using it dot so it is this nav backsec entry here with which we get access to the arguments. So it dot arguments meganaltech dot get int because our color is of type integer. And here we specify the name of the key, which is dominant color. And because right now that is just an integer and not in form of a composed color, we want to also wrap that into such a color object. So all we return here is if the color is not equal to null, so we use a let block, then we want to return this composed color. So color class from Android X compose. And here we can pass our color as integer where we can pass it. And if it is equal to null, we just want to use white as default. So just color, we can just use color dot white, I think, yes. And we can do the same for our Pokemon name. It's equal to remember. I don't think we even need remember for this one. Um, for the dominant color, we had quite some checks here, so we can save 
the result of that with remember so we don't compute that every time on recomposition but for the Pokemon name we don't have that I will still use it it's definitely not bad so in here we can just say backstack uh, we don't gave that a name it dot arguments dot gets a string this time and the string is Pokemon name and then down here we would just put our composable for our Pokemon detail screen we would pass those two arguments and then we would have have access to that in our composable actually and that is already everything for navigation here that is super simple now so even though I explained quite a lot here we didn't take that much time to actually implement that it's really just this nav host and these composables which just define our signal screens the second thing I want to implement in this video is our dagger hill setup um, just the basic setup to be able to inject dependencies on the one hand before I forget it I will annotate this main activity with add Android entry point, which is just a dagger hilt annotation to tell this activity, okay, we want to be able to inject something into this activity. And then we need to create an application class next in our root package, new Kotlin class of file called pokedex application. Uh, yes, I want to add that to git. We inherit from applica application and Annotate this with Hilt Android app. So this basically just marks this as our application class for Dagger Hilt. So Dagger Hilt has access to our application context and things like that. Then in case you want to use Timber here, you can override on create and just use timber.plant. We want to plant a debug tree, which just initializes Timber here. Nothing more, nothing less. Then we need to remember that we need to add this application class to our manifest file. So let's switch to that. Go inside of our application tag and write a name and pass our Pokedex application. And finally, I will create a DI folder for dependency injections. So in our root package, new package, DI. And in that package, I will create a class or an object rather called app module. When using dagger for dependency injection we need to define such modules in which we just define how we construct our dependencies so that dagger is actually able to inject these into our classes. If you want to know how dagger hilt works in detail then I can only recommend to watch my full dagger hilt course here on YouTube but other than that all we need to do here for this app module is we want to annotate this with module to just tell Daggerhild, hey, that's a module. And we want to install that module into the so-called singleton component, double colon class. So singleton component means that the dependencies that we have in our app module will live as long as our application does. So all these dependencies in our app module will be singletons. So here in our project, that will just be our repository and our API instance. We don't have that many dependencies here in this project. But other than that, that is it for this first part of this playlist. I hope you liked it. If so, please give it a like, leave a comment below. If you want to see more advanced Android courses, check out the first link in this video's description. There you will find premium courses from me and those are also a way to support me and my work. I wish you an excellent day and I will hope that I will see you in the next video again. Bye bye.